Hey everyone, John here with support at schooloftrade.com and today we're going to be taking a look at advanced dome options. Uh, so basically what that means is we're going to be looking at some of the basic stuff like limit orders, stop orders, uh, stop limit orders, but we're also going to dig a little bit into uh, sim stop limits uh, as well as sim volume stops uh, and, and how to use them and what, what they really do. Uh, so to start out, first we're going to need to open up a dome like I've got here. Uh, and to do that you'll go to File, New, and then you can either open a dynamic or a static, uh, depending on which one you have. Uh, some of you might only have one of these options if you haven't unlocked both of them with your broker. Um, and if, if that's something you need to do, you can just call your broker and let them know that you want to add uh, one of them. They usually charge uh, 10 cents per round turn uh, extra on your commission. Um, so not a huge deal, but uh, without getting into too much detail on that, uh, to start out, we've got the, the basic types of orders, which would be a limit order. Uh, so if I wanted to buy, this is crude oil, uh, and we've got the CL0713. And if I want to buy crude oil, I can place a limit order by simply left-clicking in this green column underneath price. Uh, so current price right now is always going to be highlighted in yellow. Uh, and the bid and the ask price are going to be in the in the green and the red, and you can see them moving around a little bit here. Uh, the numbers on the left side here and the right side are going to be current orders that are in the market right now uh, that haven't been filled. Um, so just a little background on the dome. Uh, so like I said, simply placing uh, a limit order by left clicking anywhere in this green column underneath current market price in the yellow uh, is how you're going to place a limit order. So if I wanted to buy a 97.83, single left click, and I've got now a limit order at uh, 97.83. Now, if I wanted to buy the market uh, above, you're not able to place a limit order uh, above the market. What you have to do is you have to set a stop order uh, above the market. There's no way that you can push a limit. If I put a limit right here, it's going to automatically fill me as soon as the market moves. And now you can see that I'm filled. Uh, the way to get around that, let me close that position. The way to get around that is to set a buy stop above the market, which uh, on your mouse, you've got the left and the right button, but you've also got the scroll wheel in the middle or a middle mouse button. What you do is go on the buy column again, and then you push down on that mouse wheel or that middle mouse button. And what that does is it places a buy stop. Uh, and you can see it's STP, and then it's got one contract. Uh, now what this means is that I'm going to get entered into the market long once the market hits 98.20. Um, now if the the problem with stop orders is that you're you're limited to um, basically you have a, a larger chance of slippage. Now what that means is with a limit order, you are not guaranteed a fill, but you're guaranteed the price if you get a fill. Uh, with a stop order, it's basically a market order. And what that means is you're guaranteed a fill, you're not guaranteed the price. Uh, so although my, my stop limit is at 98.20, I'm not necessarily going to get 98.20. If the market moves quickly, I might get 98.22 or 98.23. So to avoid that, you set a buy stop limit. Now, in order to do that, let me cancel that order really quick. What you want to do is hold down control on the keyboard and then use the middle mouse button again, just like you were placing a stop order, but this time you're holding down control. And what that's going to do is it's going to pop up a dialog right here, uh, and it should have zero in there with some up and down arrows and then confirm or cancel. Uh, now, what this means is this is how much you're willing to accept for slippage. Uh, if you don't want any slippage, you leave it as zero. If you don't mind having one tick of slippage now and again, uh, you can set that to one. Uh, so I'll put it at zero uh, because I don't want any slippage. I want it at the price I set it at. And then I'll click check. And now you'll see that it's a little more purple. It's not so pink. And now it says SLM, which means stop limit. Now this means that, again, with a limit order, you're guaranteed the price. You're not guaranteed the fill. So if the market moves quickly through 98.20, it's going to activate a limit order at 98.20, but I might not get filled there. Um, so we'll cancel that. Uh, and then the next order is going to be uh, the simulated stop limit. Now in order to turn on the simulated portion of this, you'll right click uh, anywhere in this blue area right now, it's sim, but it would be white when you have your live account. Uh, but we'll just right click on an empty space. And then what you want to do is go to simulated order. Now alternatively, you can also hold down control and hit A, and you can see the hotkeys on the right side here. When you do that, it's going to pop up this green little box on the right side of the account that says SO. Uh, now what that means is this is going to be a simulated order initially to enter into a live order. Um, now as an example, what you'll do is just like placing a regular stop limit order, you'll hold down control, and then you're going to use the middle mouse button again, or the scroll wheel, 
and push down. Now this time, it, it looks identical to a limit order, but this is slightly different. Because we've activated the simulated order, uh, this is saying, basically, I want price to get to 98.23 before I place a limit order below the market. And that's where you're going to type this in. So if I want price to, say as an example, go to the high of day, and then I want to buy it five ticks under the high of day, I would do this at the high of day, and then I would do minus five and then push the check mark. Now you'll see in yellow, whenever you see yellow like this, that means it's simulated. Um, now it's not simulated in the sense that if you were using this on a live account, you're not going to get a live fill. Uh, this is simulated in the sense that this needs to be simulated, uh, it needs to be hit by the market in simulation before it enters the actual order itself. Uh, so you'll see here, uh, since I have it set to negative five, if I set this at 98.13, uh, it'll put the order, see how it did? It put the order five ticks below 98.13 at 98.08. Uh, and that's basically what the simulated stop limit order does. Uh, so now again, when you do this, it's going to place a limit order underneath. So you're guaranteed the price, you're not guaranteed the fill. So if the market never comes back to 98.08, I'm not going to get that fill. Uh, so we'll just close this order. Uh, and then the next order that we're going to be looking at is a simulated volume stop. Uh, now this isn't an order that you're going to place on the dome. This is something you're going to be placing in an ATM strategy in the bottom. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll, in this case I have none selected, so we'll just open that up and we'll do custom. Uh, and then we'll open the, we'll just do a quick uh, 15 tick, 30 tick. Uh, under the stop strategy right now it has none. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch that to custom. Uh, and then in here, this is the general uh, stop strategy. Now this, this does have more complex rules inside of here, uh, but just the basics. The profit trigger, 10 plus 0. What that means is I want, once I'm in the market, once price hits 10 ticks in my favor, it's going to move my stop to break even plus or minus 0, or break even. Uh, if I want to cover commission, change that to 1. Uh, if you've got multiple positions uh, and you want it at plus 5, and you want to move your stop to negative five to basically have a break even with a little room. Um, that's another way that you can do it. Uh, so in this case, we'll just do a 10-0. Uh, now, underneath this, you've got this auto trail in ticks. Uh, now, the way that this works is a little bit complex, but uh, keep in mind, this is profit trigger 10, and you've got profit trigger over here. Uh, so, profit trigger, again, means that once price hits this, I want it to do X, Y, Z. Uh, so, in this case, once price hits not 210, 20 ticks, uh, I want the stop loss to move 5 ticks below behind current price. And I want this to do it every 1 tick it moves in, in my favor. So when it gets to 20 ticks, it's going to move my stop to 5 ticks behind the market. When it gets to 21, it's going to move it up 1 tick. So it's always going to be 5 ticks behind current market. If I set this to 2, it's got to get to 22 before it moves at 5 ticks behind. Um, the, basically what makes this so complex is that you've got one step, two step, three step, and I think that really confuses people. Um, basically when you do that, you're going to start, when you set it to three steps, you're going to set three different things. Uh, so if you want to slowly ratchet up your stop, uh, you can do that as well. So say once it gets to 20 ticks, I want it to move 10 ticks behind current market. And when we get to 30 ticks, I want it to do this every tick we go on in our favor, and I want this to do it five ticks behind. And once we get to 40 ticks, I want to do it every time the market moves, and I want to do three ticks behind market price. And basically what you're doing is you're ratcheting down your stop. Uh, so that's the, uh, that's the auto trail. Now the volume trigger, now at the bottom, let me cancel these out so I can, uh, so I can start a fresh one. Uh, the volume trigger itself, this is a little bit different. You'll see here you've got, uh, on the right side of the dome, you've got 115, 20, 34, 26. Uh, like I said, those are orders that haven't been filled. Uh, now, the difference is, on the, on, the, on the left side here in the buy column, you can't see other people's buy stops. So you have no idea if there's a thousand lot buy stop at 98.10. You, you've got no idea. Um, the way to kind of hedge against yourself uh, against something like that is going to be setting a volume trigger. Now what that does is basically states to uh, the computer that you need, uh, as an example, if I wanted this to be 100, um, what you're telling the computer is that I want 100 stops to be hit before you place my stop in the market. Uh, now this is going to, this is an attempt to basically try to prevent those one tick touch stop outs. Uh, 
so basically, if I wanted this at 100, which is about right for crude oil. Now, if this was the S&P 500, 100 contracts goes by faster than you can blink an eye. Uh, so this is definitely something that you have to pay attention to and change actively. Uh, but in this case, what I want to do is I want to change this to 100, and I want to set a... Let me turn off my simulated order really quick. Uh, and I want to... I'm in long. And I've got a stop order down at 97.91. Now what that means is, because I have this set as custom, when it gets to 97.91, if 100 contracts aren't traded at 97.91, my order isn't going to go in. And you can see it is simulated. So technically, there isn't a stop order in the market. However, if price moves through 97.91, it's going to place a stop order and you're going to get out with some slippage. Uh, so as an example, let me put this at 99. Um, and you'll see that price will come down and it'll touch it, but it's not going to fill it immediately. Let me keep bumping it up until it actually does it. Okay, in that case right there, 100 contracts traded and it took me out at my stop. Um, now, if you were to set that to 1,000 on crude oil, you're most likely just going to get slippage. Uh, there, there's far more than 1,000 contracts trading at any level. Uh, I'm sorry, far far less <laughs> than a thousand contracts traded at any level. Um, so those are the advanced dome strategies. Uh, if you have any questions with it, feel free to send us an email to support at schooloftrade.com, and we'll be sure to get back to you as soon as we can. Have a good one. Bye.